Good Morning Future Auditors, Chapter 1 is Introduction to Assurance Engagements. Assurance engagement means an engagement in which a practitioner expresses a conclusion designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users other than the responsible party about the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter against criteria. The definition indicates that an assurance engagement that are three parties involved in the audit. The three parties involved in an assurance engagement are the practitioner the responsible party intended users. An example of an assurance engagement is audit of financial statements. In this case, the practitioner is called the auditor, the responsible party is the management and the intended users are the shareholders. From the definition, we digest that the objective of an assurance engagement is to express a conclusion to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users. This is accomplished by the preparation of a report indicating the practitioner's conclusion. In the case of a financial statement audit, the auditor's report is made. The definition also indicates that an assurance engagement necessarily include a subject matter, or the outcome of the evaluation of a subject matter. In an audit engagement, the subject matter are the financial condition or financial performance, and the outcome or the subject matter information pertains statements the statement of financial condition, and the statement of financial performance. The definition also indicates that an assurance engagement has a criteria. In the case of a financial statements audit, the criteria pertains to the generally accepted accounting principles pronounced in the PFRS or Philippine Financial Reporting Standards. We now summarize that there are five essential elements of an assurance engagement. This may be represented by the acronym, CREST. C means criteria. R is for report. E is for evidence. S is for subject matter, and T stands for tripartite or three-party relationship. Subject matter may include financial performance or conditions, non-financial performance or conditions, physical characteristics, systems and processes and behavior. Subject matter information means the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter. A suitable criteria exhibit the following characteristics. Relevance, relevant criteria contribute to conclusions that assist decision-making by the intended users. Completeness, criteria are sufficiently complete when relevant factors that could affect the conclusions in the context of the engagement circumstances are not omitted. Complete criteria include, where relevant, benchmarks for presentation and disclosure. Reliability. Reliable criteria allow reasonably consistent evaluation or measurement of the subject matter including, where relevant, presentation and disclosure, when used in similar circumstances by similarly qualified practitioners. Understandability. Understandable criteria contribute to conclusions that are clear, comprehensive, and not subject to significantly different interpretations. The evaluation or measurement of a subject matter on the basis of the practitioner's own expectations, judgments and individual experience would not constitute suitable criteria. Neutrality, neutral criteria contribute to conclusions that are free from bias. Criteria can either be established or specifically developed. Established criteria are those embodied in laws or regulations, or issued by authorized or recognized bodies of experts that follow a transparent due process. b. Specifically developed criteria are those designed for the purpose of the engagement. The practitioner plans and performs an assurance engagement with an attitude of professional skepticism to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence about whether the subject matter information is free of material misstatement. Sufficiency is the measure of the quantity of evidence. Appropriateness is the measure of the quality of evidence, that is, its relevance and its reliability. And evidence must be both sufficient and appropriate. Merely obtaining more evidence may not compensate for its poor quality. An attitude of professional skepticism means the practitioner makes a critical assessment, with a questioning mind, of the validity of evidence obtained and is alert to evidence that contradicts or brings into question the reliability of documents or representations by the responsible party. The reliability of evidence is influenced by its source and by its nature. 
Generalizations about the reliability of various kinds of evidence can be made, however, such generalizations are subject to important exceptions. Evidence is more reliable when it is obtained from independent sources outside the entity. Evidence that is generated internally is more reliable when the related controls are effective. Evidence obtained directly by the practitioner is more reliable than evidence obtained indirectly or by inference for example, an observation of the application of a control is better than inquiry about the application of a control. Evidence is more reliable when it exists in documentary form, whether paper, electronic, or other media for example, a contemporaneously written record of a meeting is more reliable than a subsequent oral representation of what was discussed. Evidence provided by original documents is more reliable than evidence provided by photocopies or facsimiles. Also take note that the practitioner considers the relationship between the cost of obtaining evidence and the usefulness of the information obtained. However, the matter of difficulty or expense involved is not in itself a valid basis for omitting an evidence-gathering procedure for which there is no alternative. The practitioner considers materiality, assurance engagement risk, and the quantity and quality of available evidence when planning and performing the engagement, in particular when determining the nature, timing and extent of evidence-gathering procedures. Assurance engagement risk is the risk that the practitioner expresses an inappropriate conclusion when the subject matter information is materially misstated. Assurance engagement risks have two components, a. The risk that the subject matter information is materially misstated, and b the risk that the practitioner will not detect a material misstatement that exists. The risk that the subject matter information is materially misstated further consists of two risk factors. First, inherent risk, the susceptibility of the subject matter information to a material misstatement, assuming that there are no related controls, and Second, control risk, the risk that a material misstatement that could occur will not be prevented, or detected and corrected, on a timely basis by related internal controls. The risk that the practitioner will not detect a material misstatement that exists is called detection risk. There are two types of assurance engagements according to level of assurance provided, a reasonable assurance engagement and a limited assurance engagement. Reasonable assurance engagements are engagements that provide high, but not absolute, level of assurance. Limited assurance on the other hand, are engagements that provide only a moderate or limited level of assurance. The objective of a reasonable assurance engagement is a reduction in assurance engagement risk to an acceptably low level while the objective of a limited assurance engagement is a reduction in assurance engagement risk to a level that is acceptable in the circumstances of the engagement. In a reasonable assurance engagement audit, the practitioner expresses the conclusion in the positive form, for example, in our opinion internal control is effective, in all material respects, based on XYZ criteria. Or in the case of financial statements audit, in our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly, in all material respects. In a limited assurance engagement review, the practitioner expresses the conclusion in the negative form, for example, based on our work described in this report, nothing has come to our attention that causes us to believe that internal control is not effective, in all material respects, based on XYZ criteria. These are the types of assurance according to structure. In an assertion-based engagement, the responsible party is responsible for the subject matter information. In a direct reporting engagement, the responsible party is responsible for the subject matter. And the practitioner is responsible for the evaluation and measurement of the subject matter which is also called the subject matter information. Here are some examples of assurance engagements. Auditing of historical financial statements. Review of financial statements. Examination of prospective financial statements. Evaluation on the effectiveness of internal controls. And here are examples of non-assurance engagements. Engagements covered by Philippine Standards for Related Services PSRS, such as agreed upon procedures engagements and compilations of financial or other information. The preparation of tax returns where no conclusion conveying assurance is expressed. 
consulting or advisory engagements such as management and tax consulting consulting involves two parties only the practitioner and the client while assurance engagements are tripartite keep working hard future auditor good day